inflation. Well, as we look ahead to a packed week, kicking off with inflation data tomorrow, Tuesday, our next guest says that we are in the third wave of post-pandemic inflation. Paul Donovan, UBS Global Wealth Management Chief Economist, joins us now. Paul, good to see you here this morning. Uh, we're excited for this week. I know you are as well. As you think about what the Fed would need to see within this CPI report to ultimately feel like the economy is digesting some of the activity that they've put forward, where are you going to be looking most specifically within a report like the CPI one and the print that's set to come for it? Well, I'm afraid with the Powell Fed, um, the obsession is just with the headline number and the headline core number. Um, I think this is a mistake. I think you really do need to look in at the detail to get an understanding of, of where inflation is going to go. But Powell's response is very much economics 101, inflation high, raise rates, you know, nothing particularly in depth about it. I think when we look at the core number, uh, which is where a lot of the attention is going to focus, uh, we need to see how wide the inflation is going to be. So there is an expectation that nearly all of the inflation in the core number is going to come from used car prices uh, and from uh, owner's equivalent rent, this, this very uh, fictional housing measure which nobody actually pays. Now, the reason that that matters is, of course, most people are not buying a used car this year. Uh, and nobody pays owner's equivalent rent. It's an entirely made up figure. So actually, a lot of the inflation in the core number that's being reported isn't actually affecting people's cost of living. That's going to be an important point in stabilizing growth later on this year. Um, and so, Paul, when we're looking at where inflation is coming from right now, if uh, especially mm. if those numbers are not really capturing what is sticking around, what it, where is it coming from right now? Well, so th th we've had a really unfortunate situation um, where we've had three very, very different inflation waves caused by very different things, and they've just come one after the other. So it looks like you've had this sort of continuous period of inflation. But the first wave, which was about consumer durable goods, that was demand-led. That's over. I mean, durable goods prices in the States are falling. You've got outright deflation. You've had uh, outright deflation now for six months in durable goods prices. The second wave of inflation was supply-led, and that was the energy shock coming out of the war in Ukraine. But then the third wave of inflation, the one we're getting now, is this unusual profit-led inflation story. Now, to be very clear, this is not the entire economy. This occurs where firms towards the end of the supply chain, so that's consumer-facing companies or near consumer-facing companies, increase margins and pretend it's all due to costs and other factors. They sneak in a margin increase. And you can see this with, for example, uh, the rise in uh, retail profits as a share of GDP. Uh, that's uh, one instance where you know, we're seeing this expansion of margin under the cover of, oh, it's a general inflation problem, we can't help it. But actually, they're expanding margin and, and just basically persuading consumers to accept that. Okay, so that sounds like ex excuseflation, if, if we can put it that way? Uh, I guess so, yes. Um, it's, I prefer profit-led inflation, but that's because I'm an economist. <laughs> and British, so, you know, we, we're, we're very precise in our language over here. Um, but yes, uh, it, it is. It's, it's using excuses. It's using a cover. Now, it doesn't last forever because at some point, either uh, governments are, or consumers realize that this is going on and they say, hold on, that's not fair. And then you start to damage brand values and you're seen as... as you know, cheating or unfairly treating the consumer. And that's exactly the point that we're now starting to get to. So just on Friday, the French finance minister um, uh, announced you know, price cuts in the food sector because they've been focusing very much on this profit-led inflation. They're saying, either you start cutting prices or we're going to do something about it. Similar pressures in Spain. Here in the UK, we've had a similar thing. So we're starting to get to the point where this profit-led inflation is really coming under pressure. And those margins in the retail sector and near the retail sector, I think, are going to start being squeezed. Yeah, I mean, this is a really fascinating um, concept to me that you talk more about in your note. And you also talk about the idea that maybe in this modern era, uh, social media can play a role in pushing back against price increases. And is it just sort of that collectively it gives a way for people to complain publicly and there's sort of transparency in pricing? 
Uh, so I think it works both ways. So on the way up, of course, what we had, you know, cast your mind back to last year, you know, these, these terrible stories about the situation in Ukraine and you know, awful images coming through. And so when companies say, well, you know, the, the, the problems of the Ukraine, the war are causing us to raise prices, we accept that because we're seeing this you know, so visibly on our social media. But then social media does also allow people to complain, to uh, uh, damage a, a company's brand. You know, if you've got the wrong hashtag trending, then your brand is going to be damaged. And if you're being accused of uh, profiteering, of, of excess profit margin uh, at a time when people are really suffering. And remember, we've had two years of negative real wage growth across the developed world. People are feeling the pain and you don't want to damage your brand in the long term if social media is starting to attack you. So I think that social media can help inflame profit-led inflation by uh, creating excuses that companies can use, but it can also work uh, by threatening brand values to cause companies to rethink some of their pricing strategies.